Right, so I thought I'd show you this. Um, as I just did my mailbag, this crystal oscillator has arrived. And I've got the T6 in here. I'm going to take the T6 out. It's got a couple of holes in the bottom which goes through, which I've got to put some screws through. Um, but there's one screw here I've got to take out, and I'm going to just pull that board out. So I thought I'd just show that actually happening. This is a really easy thing to get into. It's like two screws and the covers are off. So, and you've got to take the feet off as well. But anyway, it's not hard. And take this out. Okay, so that's that board out. There's a little spacer here you got to watch out for. Don't lose that. Um, what I th think I will do is actually just screw that back in there so it does not get lost. I don't think it will be in the way. Just in case the oscillator doesn't work or it ever fails, at least I can just put the TCXO back in again. Alright, so there's the oscillator. Now it's got these um, feet on the bottom here. Actually, I might have backed out slightly. Alright, so it's got these feet on the bottom here. I've got to find some screws to go into these. Um, I'm not quite sure what they are. Let's go and have a quick look. They look imperial. Alright, so I found these computer screws. Um, they often use a lot of hard drives and stuff like that but uh, they're the same thread so um, that's what I can use to hold the thing in so now I can actually install it so let's do that and find out how hard it is to actually get the thing in some wire limb over there which is slightly in the way of course push that out of the way Hopefully it all just goes together nicely. Okay, that's in place. Just tuck this wire loom out of the way slightly. Still pushing against it. So now this holes here which should line up and they do. Then I'll try it out and see if it actually works. Okay. So, it's in. Alright, so I'm just uh, trying the uh, crystal oscillator out, well, the ovenized oscillator. Just there, so I've done just plug it in. I've, it's only been on for probably powered up for about 10 minutes, so it's still settling down. And um, same for my Marconi there, that's still settling down as well. And uh, that's what it's doing at the moment, and it's not doing too bad. So, obviously, it needs a proper warm up period, but um, right now it's looking pretty damn good. So, at least it's actually working. And uh, I'll do some more long term testing. I'll try it again tomorrow and uh, see how it comes out. Right, so I've got the uh, unit powered up. This has been on overnight, um, well, plugged in the power overnight because the ovenized oscillator runs over, um, all the time it's plugged in. So I've got my Rubidium standard hooked up and I'm running. It's been running for about 20 minutes now and it seems to have settled down quite nicely. And uh, this is the frequency we're getting on the display, so it's slightly out. Um, it's also slightly out compared to my Marconi outputting a 500 megahertz signal, which I'll show you in a minute. I'll try it again after I've done a slight calibration. So I've got a tuning tool plugged into the back here, just in the back, just there. I have to find the right one. I haven't actually tried adjusting it yet, but I have to find one that fitted. Has to be an insulated tool. Try to get it back in the slot now. There we go. Right. Let's see what happens when I try and adjust it. Doesn't want to move. Feels like it might be seized up. Hmm. Okay. I have to turn the power off, give it a bit of a tweak to free it, and then carry on. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'll just free it up with the metal screwdriver. So now I should be able to turn this now and adjust it. Let's have a look. It was turning now at least. Uh, here we go. Right. So that's now reading correctly. However, it's got quite a um, big tolerance there. That's interesting. It went back up a little bit. I'm going to move that quite a bit. Um, yeah, anyway, what I might have to do is actually um, do a comparative sine wave measurement on a scope, which is the other way of tuning these things. Yeah, we'll see. And right now, it's, I mean, that's good enough accuracy, on, on, at least on that frequency, but, um, yeah, that's, so it's actually damaging the tip. This is a bit stiff, you see. Try and get it to focus on it. Damage the tip very slightly, so it's slightly twisted now. But, uh, can't do much about that. At least that's already a lot closer. How close? I don't know. Let's chuck a 500 megahertz signal into it. Okay. So either the Marconi's out slightly or this is a little bit too much. This is, um, because I'm, I'm not sure about where that zero point is exactly. So I'm going to tune it to the Marconi because the Marconi I'm confident is, is really close. So I might just give that a bit of a tween back and uh, tune that one there for 500. And then we'll see what comes out with the 10 megahertz signal again. Not too far. I mean, what I could probably do actually is plug the, the uh, rubidium into the Marconi and then generate a 500 megahertz signal from that. That might be an option. Anyway, let's try again and see what we get. Yeah, so showing one hurt there. So I'm guessing that the um, Marconi is slightly off. It could be a rounding error. Let's go a bit longer gate time. A bit too long, Gaetan. Now, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's close, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. I might have to chuck, chuck the um, rubidium onto the Marconi, then generate from that. Oh, I'll just do that. Hold on, I'll be back. I'll be right back. So, I tried to hook the rubidium up to the Marconi, um, however, it doesn't like the external standard input. I'm guessing the signal level is too low or something. So that's not a go, unfortunately. So I might have to live with what I've got and see if that's good enough. All right, so I've uh, got my scope going. I'm going to do this 10 megahertz comparison on a sine wave. So this is currently hooked up to my Marconi. You can see it's just very slightly out. All right. So I'm actually going to pull my Marconi down and just give it a little bit of a tweak and get that set correctly. And uh, then I will do the same thing on the HP frequency counter. Well, I just want to get my Marconi right while I'm doing this, I might as well do, the, do that as well. Um, so let's get the Marconi pulled out so I can work on that. It's got a little adjustment on the back, so it's quite easy on this one. I just want to get into the adjustment on the back, that's the problem. Oh. So I've been pushing buttons at the same time, doesn't help. That's not the right one. Oh. Yeah, hold on. Okay. Back to where it was. Let's get a uh, screwdriver that fits. 
choice again. Okay, that's close. Very close. Still got a little bit of drift there, but that's really close. All right, that's close enough for what I want. So now I'm going to unplug that and plug that back into the HP. And see what the HP gives for 500 megahertz. Let's try and get it all back in place again. Okay, freak 500 megahertz. Interesting. Oh, I might be my wife levels a bit low now. Hold on, let's just increase that. There we go, that's better. So there we go. So you can see this by doing that phase comparison on the scope there. But that is really, really close. You know, there's a little bit of uh, counting error there. My, my signal level is a little bit low still, but there we go, look at that. So I think that uh, OCXO is pretty much bang on. I will just do a check on the output of that OCXO though. So I shall pause this and come back. Now interestingly, so this is hooked up to the HP, um, its output. Look at the state of that sine wave. That's not really a sine wave, is it? That's uh, very, very interesting. I wouldn't have expected it to be that noisy. You know, let's just try giving it a bit of a tweak. See if I can get this uh, timing better. Because we're going the right direction. Not too far. Very touchy actually. Alright, so I think I might just leave it there. That's pretty close. Pretty close. But it's interesting the way that sine wave is not really a sine wave on the output. That's very, very dirty. Um, I might have to look into that a bit further and find out what's going on there. It could be the cables, that's possible. But uh, I'm only using a crappy RCA cable for that. But oh, RCA cable, I. Um, it's PL259, but 50 ohms and stuff like that, but um, it's not a great cable. You just uh, hook up a scope probe to that and just try that again. And see if that changes anything. Well, yeah, it's changed it. It's not great still, but it's different. So it could just be a cabling issue, which is why it's looking a bit ugly. But that phasing is looking really good now. It's slowly rolling, but I don't think I'm going to get any closer than that. So now I'll just um, plug the Marconi into the HP again and have another look at that frequency and see what we get. But yeah, at least the um, avanized oscillator is working nicely. So that's always something. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Get the tripod to stay stable, be good. Plugged in. The Marconi is on. Why am I not seeing a signal now? Oven? Never noticed that before. Um,
Okay. No, it's not got a gate time. What's going on with this thing? Does it think the oven's not warmed up now? Maybe I've confused it by flicking the switch whilst it's on. Hold on. Let's just reboot. Yeah, there we go. Right, that's what it was. Okay. I flicked the um, internal external reference switch on the back. I was just playing with that. So that's showing us slightly out from the Marconi. Could be gate time. Could be uh, input level. Give it a little bit more. It's still quite low. See if that helps at all. Yeah, slightly. Yeah, so good enough. Certainly good, good enough.